Hello, my name's Lee Healy and I'm the Managing Director of Income Max, the entitlement expert. We help people to make sense of and understand the benefits and tax credit system. Today, we're going to tell you lots about the benefits and tax credits that are available. Now, carer's allowance is a benefit aimed at a carer who's caring for a disabled person. Now, there's lots of rules and regulations around carer's allowance, so we'll try and give you an idea of, uh, of what to think about if you're thinking about making a claim to, uh, to this benefit. Now, first of all, before you even think about claiming as a carer, the disabled person needs to be in receipt of the correct benefit. So this is the person that you're actually looking after and caring for. Now, the, the disabled person needs to be in receipt of disability living allowance, care component at the middle or high rate, or any rate of the attendance allowance, that's low or high rate attendance allowance. So before you even think about carer's allowance, the disabled person you care for must be in receipt of the correct disability benefit. Now on to you as a carer. So first of all, here's some things to think about. First of all, um, carer's allowance overlaps with certain benefits. So for example, things like incapacity benefit or employment and support allowance contribution based, um, state pension for example, they all uh, kind of overlap with carer's allowance, meaning that probably if you get those benefits, you might not be able to get carer's allowance as well. The next thing to think about is work. Um, basically, as a carer, if you earn more than £100 a week, you will not be able to claim carer's allowance for caring for someone. That's really, really important because obviously, um, you know, you may be thinking about claiming as a carer and you may be doing, uh, you know, lots of care for that disabled person. But if you're working and earning more than £100 uh, per week, you won't be able to claim as a carer. There's also some qualifying criteria about the hours that you need to be doing as a carer. Basically, you need to be caring for someone at least 35 hours per week. So once again, that's 35 hours per week that you actually need to be providing that care for. There's loads and loads of other issues around carers as well. So the best advice is always to try and seek some advice from an expert to see whether carer's allowance is, is relevant for you as a carer and also for the disabled person as well. One of the things I wanted to mention is the fact that the claiming of carer's allowance can actually affect the disabled person's benefit. And that's because lots of disabled people, if they live on their own, um, they get something called a, a, an extra premium and that can be in things like pension credit or income support, housing benefit and council tax benefit. So before claiming as a carer, you should really have a full benefit assessment done on the uh, disabled person's benefits as well, just to make sure that by you claiming as a carer, you haven't affected or lost uh, your, uh, the disabled person some money as well. Also, it's worth mentioning that carer's allowance has a kind of link with income support. Um, if you are a carer, income support will often be relevant for you as well. So it's well worth checking that side of things out. But of course, income support is a means tested benefit and you're subject to the rules and regulations around income support as well. So just to summarise, carer's allowance is a, a benefit, it's a non-contributory benefit um, for carers who are caring for someone, uh, a disabled person, at least 35 hours per week. For more information on carer's allowance, it's well worth visiting the Disability Alliance website. They have lots of fact sheets on all the different benefits that are available, including information on carer's allowance. Visit www.disabilityalliance.org. And that's a quick guide to carer's allowance.